everyone. Um, welcome to my second episode of my podcast. My name's Melanie. I am a knitter, spinner, weaver, currently residing in Los Angeles, California. And you can find me on Instagram as Cozy Cardigans, um, Cozy underscore Cardigans and on Ravelry as Cozy Cardigans. And I'm also on another Instagram account, mel.sato for my weaving. And yeah, if you guys are back from my first episode, thanks for coming back. Um, and if you guys just found me, um, welcome. Um, I have a few things to talk about today. Um, not too much stuff. Um, I got a lot of stuff done during the Christmas holiday season. Um, it's a new year, so I was thinking about casting on on New Year's, which was yesterday. Today's the second, but um, I was like, maybe I should get some of my current whips done first. I might cast on something next week because I am gonna, probably going to finish some stuff by then, but we shall see. So I don't really have any new cast-ons today, but I do have a couple of acquisitions. So um, this is kind of like a, a little Christmas treat to myself. Um, well, I used a gift card that I got as a Christmas gift, but... Um, yeah, I guess I'll start with the acquisitions. So first thing I got was this really pretty fiber. Um, it's like this really nice rainbow color. You know, what I realized when I started spinning was that I'm a very, well, I choose colors, very subtle colors when it comes to knitting. I choose like grays and like beiges and browns, but then when it comes to spinning, I kind of go crazy. And this is like my chance to uh, um, kind of play with color, do what I want to do kind of thing. So I got this guy from a Three Waters Farm. I'm a really big fan of their um, colorways and finally was able to buy one, which is great. Um, this colorway is called Time Stood Still, and it's on 80% merino, 20% Tessa silk. So it's not a blend that I've ever worked with, but it is so soft, and the colors look so good together. I'm so excited. It's like a mirror, like a mirror dyed yarn, so it starts from here and then it kind of, the colors kind of mirror each other as it goes outwards. And then you can see that it starts mirroring back from this side. So it's really pretty. Um, I'm actually planning to do my first fractal spin on it, which is exciting. Um, I'll probably make a video of that. Not that I'm like a fractal spinning um, expert, because as I said, I've never done it before, but I think it'd be really cool to just take you guys along for the ride and see what mistakes I make and uh, see what this looks like in fractal spin. I think that would look really cool. Because the colors, all the colors play really well together. You can see. So yeah, that'll be really fun. So excited about this. Um. Another thing that I got that I wasn't really expecting to get were these two skeins of black Welsh mountain wool. Um, I saw these, I think I saw these online. I was looking for a naturally really black skein of yarn, like naturally as in it hasn't been dyed or anything. And mainly because my husband wants a black beanie. I don't know if you guys saw in my 2019 roundup, but um, he 
as a collection of beanies that I've made and he wants a black one and so I've been on the search for a and he wants one that's like non undyed an undyed black beanie so it's really hard to find and um what was I saying so I found this online black welsh mountain wool so online it looked really black so I ordered it from the UK so I wasn't able to see it in person and I looked on Ravelry and it did look black to me from based on the photos that people um you take when they stash their yarn so I bought this and it's actually not super black so this is like a dark gray you could tell that it's like a warmer very dark brown which isn't a big deal i still really love it it's very rustic it's um not the softest wool but it's very rustic and i know that's the kind of thing he likes to um have so i'm gonna probably make a beanie out of this one real soon because he wants Three more beanies by his birthday and his birthday is on february 2nd so i need to get on that but um yeah it's an unexpected um yarn acquisition but not complaining it's not a yarn i've worked with before so very excited to knit with it um yeah it's the arm scope manor arm scope manor black welsh mountain wool and it's undyed 100% wool spun entirely from the fleeces of their single flock of conservation grazed rare sheep breed made in england and it's dk weight 100 grams and 100 grams of dk is 220 meters 238 yards info if you want oh by the way i'm linking all this stuff down below in the description if you guys hear about something that you want to check out i write everything down so don't worry about it but yeah can we yarn acquisition um that's pretty much it for acquisitions i don't usually get it much in general throughout the year so this is a bit rare for me but um yeah so that's that um finish object so i have one one finished object so it's this sweater here it's the um let me get up it's the column sweater by ooh, I'm so bad with names hiromi nagasawa maybe oh info will be up on the screen um so this is a column sweater and has a bit of a rolled neck oh I used my own hand spun bulky yarn out of to make this, which is really exciting. So you can kind of, I'm not sure if you could tell or anything. The camera kind of blows out the color, especially because of the lighting, but it's actually a very dark brown with a bit of like, you can see that it's fuzzy, has like white bits of halo around it. So it's really fun and fuzzy. And it's really heavy because it's hand spun. It's my first like major hand spun. And so it's not the best. Um, yeah, it's pretty dense, I guess. You can see I'm not very practiced with my spinning as I would like to be. Hopefully I will be soon. But I didn't get as much yardage out of this as I would have liked to. It might have been because I was spinning it in the fold. So like when you spin roving, you can spin it like, say this is the length of roving, you could spin it off the tip. So I was doing that at first, for the first skein I did that, but it came out very ropey and very dense because it is alpaca. This is all 100% alpaca and alpaca is, their hair is, it almost, was like I was spinning with human hair a bit, kind of, like human, like maybe like my kind of hair, like very long, very straight, very dark. And so when you spin it just like off the roving like that, it gets very dense and very ropey very quickly and easily. 
so it wasn't getting like that full like fluffy soft feel that I was looking for in my yarn so I decided to spin it from the fold and then um so what I did was I would tear off like maybe about three inches of roving spread it out so that it like kind of so instead of like being a tube, I would kind of spread it out so that it would be flat. And then I'd fold it in half. It's really hard to describe. <laughs> but then I would fold it in half and then spin from the fold. So it's called spinning from the fold. And what that does is introduces a lot more like air and it doesn't keep the um, fibers straight anymore. So it's almost, not this it's not the same as spinning from like um a roll lag almost but you know when you spin from a roll lag you're spinning the fibers from the side rather than from the tip as you would from a roving so spinning from the fold helped introduce some more fluff to it which i really like but i also feel like because i folded it in half it didn't I didn't have as much yardage as I hoped I would. So I was actually really worried when I was knitting this sweater that, oh man, maybe I don't have enough. But because it is bulky yarn, it really it knit up very quickly with less yardage than you normally would with a, like a fingering weight type of yarn. And I usually work with fingering weight when I knit sweaters. So I was used to that. So I wasn't really sure what to expect when it came to bulky because I don't think I've made a bulky sweater. So yeah, it worked out. Um, I still have one more skein and um, my husband wants a beanie out of that because it's a different color than this one that I'm gonna make him. It's like a bit more shiny and obviously you could kind of see that this is a bit browner and this one's definitely a dark gray. So yeah, so I finished this calm sweater. I really like it. It's very warm. Let me get up. Has the rib stitch at the edges here and here. It's very fuzzy. I really like the um, the decreases here. And then this is the first time I've attached the sleeves and then uh, stitched the armpit stitches shut, which was interesting. I haven't done that technique before, so that was fun. And then it has this nice rolled neck. And I was kind of worried that the neck was gonna be too small, but once I blocked it, it kind of opened up a little bit, which is nice, cause it's not really, it's like not, it's very soft, but it is a little scratchy because of the white bits in there. I think that kind of like pokes my skin. And I'm not very, I wish I could be the type of person who can wear a really itchy yarn, but I'm not. So this itself is like a little itchy for me, but I am wearing like heat tech underneath. So that helps a lot with the itchiness factor. But yeah, super warm. It's definitely a winter wear, especially here in SoCal. Um, I think it'd be really nice if I went it would be a nice wear if I were to go to like the mountains or like on a trip or something to some colder climate. It would be a great piece to have in my trip wardrobe, capsule wardrobe type of thing. So yeah, this is really great. I'm really happy with this. I'm really glad that the hand spin yarn worked out, that I had enough because that yarn or that fiber that I got for that yarn, it's from a Japanese store or a store in Japan, in Tokyo that I got. So I would not have been able to get some more if I needed it. So yeah, so glad that worked out. Hopefully I wanna, I'm gonna go back, I'm planning to go back this year. Um, I really wanna take you guys to that store. It's really cool. Um, maybe I'll post a photo of it. I posted a photo of it on Instagram and it kind of, it blew up for me like it got a lot of likes and then people were kind of freaking out about how much fiber there was in that store um so i kind of want to take you guys with me maybe i could take some more pics or maybe in the video i feel really like self-conscious when it comes to taking videos in public still
because, I don't know, sometimes being in LA, you kind of see those people who walk around with their camera talking to themselves and you're kind of like, you can totally tell that they're vlogging or something. And so I'm like really self-conscious that I look like that guy who's obnoxiously talking to themselves in front of a camera <laughs> in public. But I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. So we'll see. Um, so that's it for my finished objects. I only finished one object. Um, I did start on and work on for like the whole entire Christmas week. I was in, um, I was in Vegas with my husband's family for Christmas week. Um, we just stayed there the whole entire time and just hung out and so I was able to knit for an entire week undisturbed with my Netflix which was awesome so I started I showed you guys the last podcast episode that I started on the collar of the twig sweater by Junko Komodo so I got this far so far it's looking so good I love it I love I was so worried about the colors. I don't know if you if you guys remember on the last podcast, I was kind of freaking out about the colors and I made like three swatches to figure out what I should do. And I was gonna make a fade twist, but then I decided not to. And then I decided on keeping the brown as the background and then using all the other colors as the accent colors for each of the rows. And what I've been doing is I have been randomly just selecting which colors are used for which row. So I'm not doing like a like purple, red, yellow, black, purple, red, yellow, black. I'm just, um, I kind of just use a random number generator because I want it to be really random. Except that the only rule is that a color does not get repeated onto the next row. That's the only rule I have for myself when it comes to choosing color. But, um, yeah, so I'm this far right now. I can't really, it's really hard to show because um, the, it's all kind of bunched up from the needles, but it's pretty much, I'm almost at the part where you split for the sleeve. So you're probably wondering why it looks a bit small. Well, one, it's scrunched up, but two, I, did have a smaller gauge than the um, gauge called for in the pattern. I think because I'm using palette yarn, um, I wonder if I have one of the ball band. Oh, yeah. I'm using Knit Picks palette. So, which is a, I think it's fingering or light fing, oh no, it says fingering weight here, but it's like a light fingering weight. I feel like it's pretty thin. So I use the same needle size, so size two needle, a US size two needle um, to knit with this. But since I'm using a thinner yarn, I think, I'm not sure what, I don't remember what yarn size it calls for, but it's not fingering, I think. But yeah, so my gauge is not pretty off, but it's like a few stitches smaller my gauge is a few stitches smaller so um yeah i don't remember the exact gauge number but my ravelry project page should have everything on there just so you know i'll, I'll link that down below too but um so yeah i'm really happy with it I'm really liking the way it's coming out um I'm expecting to it to kind of be a little bigger once I block it, so there's that too. Because it is color work, it kind of like puckers into itself when it's like not um, blocked out. But when it's blocked out, it should fit me like exactly. You can see the neck is like exactly my neck. And on the project page photos, the sweater is usually gigantic. Like it's a very big oversized sweater. It's one size only. So you kind of, the only choice you really have in making your own custom size to it is to use 
either bigger or smaller yarn depending on what you're going for so as a petite person i'm only five feet tall so very very oversized sweaters to me are very 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 oversized so knitting it in a smaller gauge into a smaller size i think will work perfectly yeah that looks so good i'm so excited to wear it yeah this is my work first color work sweater or color work project ever so that's really exciting that i could i can do it yeah because it looks so scary on the computer or on instagram when people do it but honestly guys it is not as bad as I thought it would be. The only thing I kind of had to teach myself for the floats. Ooh, look at that. Looks so cool. But yeah, the only thing I kind of had to teach myself or remind myself was, um, well, first I was knitting the, when I was knitting with two colors. Ooh, it's coming out. First, when I was knitting with two colors, I would knit with I would knit with my right hand because I am, I don't know, not a continental knitter. What's the other What's the other word for the other knitter? But anyways, I usually knit with my right my yarn in my right hand, so I would hold both, not hold both, but I would like switch the colors every time, and it would take forever to switch the colors back and forth to get those color changes. So back in college, I tried to teach myself continental knitting because I knew that it's faster when you knit, um, but I could not, <laughs> could not understand how to purl continental. So it kind of worked out because I kind of was used to knitting continental anyway. So what I did was teach myself to hold the main color. Well, I like to hold the main color in my right hand because that's my dominant hand. And then I would hold the accent color with my left and then continental knit the accent colors. And then regularly, I regularly knit my main colors. So it, that went, that helped the color work go by a lot faster to be able to hold the yarn in two separate hands. So yeah, in the beginning, that was what I was doing. And I think that holding it on my right hand, I was also very scared of my, like, my um, tension because I thought that, or I felt that I read a lot about how people would um, hold their yarn too tightly when they knit color work. So I was kind of scared of that. So I was holding it actually too loosely, I think, in the beginning for the color work. I don't know if you could tell, but you could tell that. So this is like my regular knitting. And you could tell that my color work stitches get a little bigger because I was hold, holding it a little looser than I would regularly because I'd always be switching my hands from one color to the next. So I think that kind of loosened my gauge a little bit. So the pattern actually tells you to um, use a needle size that's one bigger when it comes to the color work sections because some people hold it so tightly. And I find that mine is actually not like that. It's actually too loose, way too loose if I use um, a needle size larger. So what I ended up doing was I hold my yarn a little too tightly than I would be comfortable with and it turns out like the so my current color work sections that I've recently finished are actually I would say like the same tension or the same gauge now because I hold it a little more tighter which is odd but that works I don't have to keep switching needles which is nice so I just use the same needle size throughout and it works out for me. So, yay. Um, what else? Oh, and then I also learned, so I was looking up the project notes for a lot of the other knitters who knitted this and all like the, I like to look at all the helpful 
um, projects. I like sort it by helpfulness and then just read like the top five to see what people said about it. So one of them said that um, because Junko um, uses very long floats for some of the um, color work, like for example, you see the tips of these little tree looking things here, like the color here, the color starts here and then ends up like maybe seven or eight stitches away here. And I don't know if that counts as a long float, but I read in one of the um, helpful project pages that um, she caught the float every, if it was longer than four or five stitches, she would catch the float so that it wouldn't um, be super long. So that's also what I did. So you can see that in that long eight stitch float, I caught it right there. So I didn't know that was a thing as I've never worked color boards before. So I didn't know that you needed to catch floats. So I taught myself that as well, which isn't that hard. You just, it makes sense in my head. It might sound difficult when you read about it on the internet or hear someone talking about it. But honestly, yeah, like, cause you don't want to have a long float because then it can, it's, easier to pull that float and like it screws up the tension in the front and then you might catch it or you might catch on your it's easier to catch on things and it it makes sense so that's another um little helpful color work tip that many of you might probably already know or if you're like me and never work color work that's just something that you do and yeah color work is hard because you have to concentrate all the time you always have to be looking at the um the chart you have to learn how to read a chart which is a big step for a lot of people i haven't worked with the chart in a really long time and so this was a fun like or is a fun project that is kind of stretching my brain a little bit because because I usually tend to knit like a stock knit stitch sweater. It's not not as advanced as a colors work sweater would be. So yeah, this is a really fun project. I really want to be able to wear it before it gets too hot here. So hopefully that gets done sometime. I'm not really like, it has to get done soon. Like I'm not really going for that speed knitting thing because this is really just like an enjoyable thing to knit. It's just really fun to sit with it for hours on end and knit color work. So yeah, this is more of a fun knitting project. Um, what else do I have? So that's the, the twig sweater. Or it's just called the twigs. Um, another thing that I've been working on that I'm like, so close to being done with, but I'm like kind of over it, but also I should just finish it, is this stripey sock. So I'm at the gusset, I'm knitting a toe up, and it's helical stripe. So you kind of see that the stripes are every other. And I'm using um, my own hand dyed one color, it's a very small nub now but I have very small feet, so this should be okay. So this is my own hand dyed. It's just this, um, if I could, will it, okay, it's not, it's not focusing. That's fine, you can kind of see the color. It kind of matches the background, but it's just this like light yellow beige color that I hand dyed. And then I also am using this Kindred Red yarn that I got a long time ago. Oops, excuse the hair. It's just the this um, crazy speckly highlighty yarn, colorful rainbow yarn. So you can kind of see how it knits up here. These speckles. So I knit a sock of just this kindred red the crazy color yarn but it came out way too big so now my husband wears it so i don't have any in mine for my size feet so i'm knitting one i finished 
I finished this one. So as you can see, my feet are pretty small, so I'm totally okay with this. I'm pretty sure that's enough for this small heel here. I'm just doing a one by one rib at the top, a little short one. I don't really like it, the rib part to be too long. So it's just a little nub of a rib just to hold it up. And then slip stitch heel. And it's a contrast heel because you can't really do helical stripes um, when it's not in the round, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think you can. So since I can't do helical stripes on the heel, I'm using this naturally dyed yarn that I made at a natural dyeing class a while back using um, fennel. It used to smell like licorice, but it doesn't smell like that now. <laughs> But yeah, so it's just like a random, random color I just plopped on here that I thought it doesn't really go with the colors very much, but I mean, it's just a heel, which is not going to be really seen. So yeah, it's just a regular vanilla stockinette sock. I really like helical stripes. I think it would be really fun to make a sweater like this, like just have a crazy hand spun crazy yarn like colorful thing and then have like a more muted tone and then mix it up to have like a helical stripe that that would look really cool an idea but yeah so i'm currently working on the gusset so i'm increasing i think i just finished the increases right now and then i'm gonna be using this to make the heel then i'll make the short ankle and Weave in the ends, that'll be done. Hopefully I'll finish this by the next podcast because I'm over it and I want to knit another pair of socks. I want to knit my husband another pair of socks because I realized while I was washing the laundry, because I hand wash all my hand, it sucks, that um, it's really satisfying to see my husband's hand in socks versus mine because mine's so short and stubby, but his feet kind of, so he has the same width as me, but his feet are like twice as long. So like goes up to here, but seeing all of that length of stockinette or pattern or whatever, is just so satisfying. I don't know. So I kind of want to knit him a pair of socks now. So I'm kind of over these. I just want to wear them. So I'm going to try to get that done soon. And so that's, that's my, that's my, um, not really thinking about a type of project that I'm working on because the twigs takes a lot of brain power. So my last thing that I'm currently working on is my Rift T. So it's a bit of a mess right now because right now, so maybe it's better if I hold it upside down because it just keeps swapping. So this is the front on my, um, waist yarn right now so this is the front that i've already worked so we i've split the sleeves the edge details really nice here by the way and then right now i'm working on the back i think i'm almost done so i need to make it the same length as the front i think i still have like an inch or half an inch to go but i'm knitting it out of this cotton fingering weight yarn that I got in Japan in Osaka so it's like this very I don't know muddled pink this muted dark grayish pink it's not really coming out very well in the camera but you can kind of see it sorry my alarm went off on my phone and I'm filming on my phone so I had to turn it off for a second but yeah what I was saying is that this is a cotton yarn fingering weight that I got in Japan from this yarn company that I've never heard of. I just picked it up because it was on sale and the yarn felt nice and it was in a nice color. But, um, kind of seems like it's like a Italian yarn maybe even. So I'll show you the ball band, but it's this. Let me put it So it's the Diana Collection Lino 
bile, lino bio yarn. And it's 67% organic linen, 33% organic cotton. So I guess it's actually technically more of a linen yarn than a cotton yarn. But it's very shiny, it's very silky. There are some, it was, I don't remember how much I bought it for, but it was very cheap. And so there are some knots in it, which I don't really mind. I just cut them out and then um, connect the two ends together like I usually do, just move on. But it does kind of make little, let me see if I could find, I don't think I could find anything, any particular ones right now, but there are some sections that I find that since the yarn is so thin that you could kind of see those connections that I make when I change balls or when those, um, when I do find those knots. So, I mean, not a big deal. It's just gonna be like a casual tee anyways, nothing fancy. I do really like this pattern. It usually calls for a worsted weight, I believe. Um, so this is a lot thinner. So what I do is um, I made a gauge swatch out of this yarn. I counted my, I got my um, stitch count within the four inches and then the row count. And then I think cause the stitch count is, there's more stitches per inch in my fingering weight than there would be in the worsted weight. I, um, so I got the cast on number for the size I wanted. So I would be, I believe, I don't remember how she named her sizes, but like I'm usually a size small for these kind of things. So I got my size small cast on count and then I, um, what do you call it? I converted their cast on count um how am i supposed to say this i converted their cast on count into my the gauge that i have so their cast on count was 20 stitches and i have i need more stitches per inch that means that i need more than 20 to cast on so i have like a way of calc. I don't know if you guys are interested in this. Maybe I'm just saying this stuff and you guys are skipping it. But I mean, let me know if you guys are interested in fig learning how I um, convert like a worsted sweater pattern into a, lin a fingering weight sweater pattern. Because she has so many larger sizes, um, it's very easy to find a larger size like with that in that needs a larger stitch count and use that size with this yarn to make your own smaller size, if that makes sense. So like instead of using the 20 stitches per inch that calls for the small size, I would go up a few sizes that says um, like 40 stitches per inch, or not sorry, 40 stitches per inch, cast on 40 stitches instead of cast on 20 stitches. And I would cast on 40 stitches with this because it would yield the same length that I'm looking for. So, I mean, it sounds really complicated when I say it right now, but if you guys want, just let me know and I can make a video all about it, all about converting patterns. Cause that way you can use whatever yarn you want in whatever um, pattern you want really, because that way you don't have to keep, because some people like to mathematically convert each of the um, like stitches to, or should I say this, like each time like a stitch is mentioned, like so cast on 20, they want to like mathematically convert it into their specific um, like, amount oh, am I making sense because I would I used to do that I used to just do 20 stitches okay I need to cast on 20 stitches it says on here but I have this gauge so then if I calculate it I need to cast on like this weird number like 37 stitches but then that 37 doesn't really work because the pattern needs like a certain amount of stitches 
um, like a multiple of four stitches, but I'm casting on 37, like well, how am I supposed to, and then you have to like round up and round down and then it kind of gets a bit confusing, but if you use another, like a larger size or a smaller size, if you're using a bulkier yarn to make your own, um, to make your sweater using whatever gauge you got, it's so much easier because the, um, the designer's already done the work of making that sweater, that larger size sweater proportionally equal to the smaller size sweater. Does this make sense? My rambling. So yeah, let me know if you guys want to know what I'm talking about. If that um, that did not make any sense. It's pretty much just how I got the, how I knew which size to make of the Rift T using fingering weight versus the called for worsted weight. That's pretty much what I'm talking about. Sorry, it took so long. But um, yeah, so that is also something that I wanna really finish by next week because I just have to um, finish knitting the back, attaching the front and back together, and then knitting the short sleeve. So it's really close to finishing. I really wanna get it done because it's just stocking it and it's kind of getting boring. Not boring but kind of ready to start on something new is what I'm just trying to say. So yeah, those three things are what I've been working on. I'm not usually like a crazy work in progress type of person. I don't usually, I usually only have two or three projects going on at a time. So um, yeah, I really do want to finish this because I am trying to start um, casting on the Ondala sweater. Um, I forget who it's by, Fiona Alice, maybe, hmm. not sure. So yeah, I'm trying to cast on an Andala sweater with the yarn I got for my birthday. So I'm trying to get these knits out of the way. And I also need to cast on my, oh, hit myself. I need to cast on my husband's beanie really soon so that I could get done by his birthday. Um, but yeah. I think that's it. Ooh, ooh, actually, I also wanted to show you guys my current, how did I forget this? I need to show you guys my work in progress for my weavings. I'm just sitting here talking about knitting. So I finished this weaving. I think I showed you guys in the roundup, if you guys haven't seen it this weaving here it's this tapestry so it's all done so it looks like it's pretty big so it's still loose and I'm planning to frame it so what I'm doing is attaching it to this canvas board here that I've made if I could I look ridiculous but pretty much just folding it over the edge stitching it and then framing it for later. But I've already done it for one of my other weavings, so I still have to do this one. So that's technically a work in progress. I'm trying to get that done real soon because this, this weaving and my other weaving that's over there has been languishing on the side for a while because I've technically finished the tapestry. I just need to finish, finish the tapestry, so. That part's always hard because I'm just always going on to the next big thing, but I need to finish it. So there's that. And then let me let me walk you over. You guys are on my phone right now. But. So let me flip this around. Excuse the mess, but this is my current project for my when it comes to my weaving. So this is, I'm planning to have this weaving be around 50 inches long, which is pretty long. So I'll, I started this a while back. I'm using this really nice, like musky green color as the background and then just plain white as the, um, 
regular design color but um yeah it's planning to be i'm planning for it to be 50 inches long still have a long way to go just wanted to show you guys where it's at right now but this red marker is the five inch mark so definitely not very close to 50 inches but it's getting there it's part of the joys of working with weaving it's uh, very satisfying when I get to the end. Yeah. That was it for my current works in progress. You guys saw my weaving. I think I really like showing you guys what I'm also weaving on. It's kind of hard to show because I've never, I don't think I've ever seen people really pick up their cameras to show people stuff when it comes to knitting podcasts, but Oh well. So yeah, that's that. Um, I think that, I mean, now that's it. That's all I've got. So, oh, when it comes to spinning, by the way, I've been knitting instead of spinning. So I still, I'm still spinning my Paulworth slash mystery green fleece, not fleece, roving. Um, that it's still a mystery but i've got some suggestions from people about it and um i've got like um someone suggested that it might be angora i haven't worked with that yet before so i'm not really sure it sounds about right though the way that she described it so it might be angora but anyways I digress. I'll talk about it next time because I'll probably have more done by the next time. I'm still, there's still a lot to card out and clean before I spin it. So I'm trying to pace myself on that one just because like the carding just takes so long. So yeah, I think that's it for this week. Um, you guys can, again, you guys can follow me on Instagram as Cozy Cardigans, Cozy underscore Cardigans, and at Mel.Asato for my weaving. And I'm always, I'm always on, I love Instagram, so I'm always on there. Um, and then uh, you can also friend me on Ravelry. I'm also on there because that's where I keep all of my project info, including my spinning. And um, yeah, if you like this video, please like it below. It helps people find me. And also subscribe if you haven't already. I do, I am trying to post a lot more often. So if you guys like anything, if you guys are into spinning, if you guys are into weaving, knitting, Give me a follow, say hi. I'd love to meet you. Um, but yeah, that's it for my episode two. Thanks for staying here for so long, hearing me talk. Um, it was really nice talking with you guys. So um, yeah, see you guys next week. <laughs>